The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how you act on them. If you haven't watched the Watch Me First video, please do that first as it lets you know what to expect. As you've read in Chapter 5, it's a nuisance that codes at the strategy level in qualitative research have the same name as codes at the tactics level in the software, rather than being called, say, tags, because they're so very different. Chapter 5 deals at length with the strategic use of codes, but here we limit ourselves just to the tactics, the mechanics of using codes. We discuss how codes are linked to other components, either manually or through autocoding, and the several ways that codes in Atlas TI can be organized. Then we move on to actions on codes, as usual, deferring the common actions on all components until the project as a whole video, but describing the specific actions of linking codes to quotations or memos, or linking codes to other codes with a relation name, to grouping codes and using these groups to filter codes, and finally, to interrogate codes. Chapter 5 discussed at length the major difference between codes at the strategy level and codes in Atlas TI at the tactics level. Here we're focusing only on tactics, the mechanics of how codes work in the program, and I'm tempted to use a different word like tag instead of code to avoid the impression that codes at the strategy level are the same as codes at the tactics level, but as you would be seeing the word code all over the place on screen here, that would require you to keep remembering they refer to the same thing, so I'll keep saying code. The purpose of codes is to link them to other components in order to interrogate those other components. Here we'll look at how codes are linked, either manually or through autocoding, and then the various ways that codes can be organized. I'll start with manually linking codes to quotations, a very common activity. In this video, I'm only going to demonstrate text documents. As you saw in the videos on documents and quotations, once a quotation is created, it makes no difference whether it came from a text, PDF, graphic, audio, or video source. They all work in the same way. So here I'll just demonstrate this text file. I'll open the Code Manager in the usual way. By the way, as I've been using the Code Manager as a floating window, it keeps opening as a floating window. If I dock it and then close the docked Code Manager, then next time I open the Code Manager, it will open docked but it's a bit easier to show you what's going on when it's floating, so here I'll refloat it as its own window. Here we see the list of codes, and codes can be created at any time, before a project starts or during the analysis. They can be created as what are called free codes for later use. Here is a new free code. I'll call it Sensing Authenticity, because this project is about authenticity in learning. And I'm expecting to find this concept and to use this code later. I can type sensing here to find all the codes that use that word. And there's only the one, the new one I just created. And then I can remove this search to see all the codes again. Creating a free code for later use there is a common thing to do. But it's even more common to continue using the codes you've already created. So I'm going to continue by opening the list of codes as a simple browser rather than the full-fledged floating manager. So I'll close the manager and I'll go to the navigators and I will open the browser for codes. This is a simple list of codes and rather than use the buttons, it involves using the right-click menus a little bit more. I prefer to move it to the right-hand side so that I can have access to the codes on the right and the text on the left and still have the Explorer over here. So we've seen how to create free codes for later use in the Code Manager, but codes are also commonly created in the process of creating a quotation and linking the code to it, so that three things are done all at once. Create a code, create a quotation, and link the code to the quotation. First we select some text, perhaps three sentences here. And then we right-click over the text, which is not yet a component, but it will become a quotation in the process of linking a code to it. We right-click and we find Open Coding. Perhaps, unfortunately, Atlas TI uses this strategy term from grounded theory, Open Coding, to describe this tactical event, which is creating a quotation out of this text, creating a new code for it, and creating the link between them. 
This process in the software is nothing to do with the analytic strategy of grounded theory of the same name, although the tactic is used in grounded theory for that purpose. But it's also used for quite different methodologies where codes are serving quite different purposes from grounded theory. But back to the tactics. I click on open coding and I'm invited to create the new code for this text. And looking at the text, I'm going to call it technical job skills. And then when I press this button, all three things will happen instantaneously. The quotation will be created, the code will be created, and a link between the two of them. This could be done as a three-step process, by first creating a quotation for that text in the way that I did it in the quotations video, and then creating a code, and then linking it. But there's no point, because this one-step process of open coding accomplishes all three at once. And of course, your existing codes can be applied to new text, either to existing quotations, selecting a code and dragging it to the quotation, or selecting some brand new text, not yet a component, but will be created as a quotation as soon as I drag a code into the text. So now we have the quotation and the code linked to the quotation. So these are the three most common ways to use codes. Create a free code for later use. Create a code in the context of creating a quotation and linking to it, called open coding. And using an existing code to apply to an existing quotation or to apply to newly selected text and turn it into a quotation in the process. There are also occasions when an analytic task calls for auto-coding. Here's how autocoding works from a mechanical point of view. Autocoding is available from the Home tab. The purpose is to ask Atlas TI to look for a word, or part of a word, or more than one word, and for each instance it finds, to create a quotation and automatically code it to the indicated code. Here I see the words mentoring skills. Perhaps I want to code every sentence in which someone mentions mentoring. I always prefer to create a new code so that the automatically created quotations don't get mixed up with painstakingly created manual quotations. So I'll create a new code called interest in mentoring. Then I'll ask the program to search for the word mentor, just in case someone says mentored or mentors. And I'll ask it to create quotations for the sentence the word is in. More sophisticated selections are explained here. I press start and the program auto-codes all the documents. When global filtering is introduced in an upcoming update, I imagine that auto-coding can be limited to only certain groups of documents, as was the case in version 7 of the program. Having completed the auto-code, I can now interrogate the new code by retrieving the automatically created quotations. I can go over to the code browser and I can type in the word mentor just to quickly find all the codes that have the word mentor in them. And I find there's only the one, the one that I just created. And it looks like it found 46 instances of the word mentor. And here I see one of the automatically created quotations, and I can retrieve and interrogate these quotations in the usual ways that I will be demonstrating in the component orientation video on coded quotations. So this completes part one on linking codes to quotations, both manually and with autocoding. Please now watch part two for the remainder of the topics on codes.